said unto them, he didn't say unto, he said unto them, follow me and I, don't say and I, will make you fishers of men. So, he says, follow me. To follow means to be behind the one you are following, directly behind, in an order. Yesterday he reigned. Okay, yesterday he followed. Are you still following today? Yesterday he went because he followed. Today are you following? He responded to you, follow not Pastor David. He said, I, Jesus Christ. Before he can make you, before he can convert you. 
before you can be transformed from where you are to where he wants you to be. You cannot follow who you are not seeing anymore. When it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no room for pressing your brakes. <laughs> I want to have a break. No, there is no room for that. If you look at the scripture, In Matthew chapter 8, verse 21 and 22, let's go there, okay? Matthew 8, 21 and 22. Matthew 8, 21 and 22. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Now listen, yesterday he reigned. Is he ready today? The Bible did not say, and a new man said, one of his disciples. That means this one was a follower, but he wanted a break for burial. This one was a follower. Another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, that means. As at yesterday, he was a lot of that disciple. Now I have a problem in my life, Lord. Allow me some time to sort myself out. <laughs> now listen to this minute. The Holy Spirit took me on Monday to go and minister to some pastors from different churches. And one of them was an evangelist. After the service, he called me the next and said, Pastor, do you know that the word the Holy Ghost told us? I sat all my elders down, I sat my pastors, and I talked them, and they were happy. Some of you don't have interest in what I'm saying. <laughs> A man came for the first time. Say, hey. Some of you are used to the word now. That means we're not part of this ministry. This is for men of, and men of God. So the disciples say, allow me to sort out myself. My father is dead. Let me pray, my father. Follow me. That means you do not determine where Jesus stops or where he takes right or left. You just follow. You can't tell him, hold on, please. Then we will go to the toilet. He's going. And it is the closer you are to him, you see what he does, you hear what he says, that you can become another man through his word. But you must be close. Follow me and I will make you say something. And I will make you, I will turn you, I will re remold you from where you were as a fisher of fish to a fisher of men, to a, from a harlot to a man of God, from a swindler to a man of God, but you must be at close range. The truth is that nothing really can satisfy you in this life. Even if I give you a million dollars, you're not going to have a million dollar problem tomorrow morning. How do I take care of your money? Even if you marry for 10 years, 20 years, you're going to have a brand new problem of how you sort out your husband or your wife. There's always a vacuum that only the leadership of Jesus Christ can fill for us. Nothing else. You cry for a breakthrough. If I give it to you, what do you do with it? If I give it to you right now, what do you do with it? You'll be happy for some time. Then the problem starts. There's still a vacuum. <laughs> There will always be a vacuum. There will always be a need. But the secret is, are you at close range with Jesus? The navigator, the one that takes us through life. 
you want to understand the life he created there will always be something you want <laughs> hallelujah thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit you look at the story of elijah in first kings 19 verse 19 first kings 19 verse 19 Uh, you see, if you look at the story, hold on, please. Here, the man said, Another man of his said unto him, Lord, that means as at yesterday, Jesus was the Lord of this disciple that was looking for a break. Uh, it is not about yesterday, it's about today. Paul said, Whatever I achieved yesterday, I count as dung, poo poo, and I press on. I said, are you pressing on? Are you pressing on? Are you still? Are you, are you pressing on? <laughs> Follow me is a continuous. <laughs> we were the apostles of last year. Don't you know we are the bishop of 2005? Uh, that one has gone. When we were dickies, we were not born. Okay, thank you. In, in let's go to, to the first Kings 19 verse 19 once you have understanding then you be able to meet life easily what are you rushing for whatever you need today you need more you have more money you begin to worry for arm robbers and assassins what you never worried before So why are you looking for what you're looking for? Put your eyes on Jesus. That's all. That's all. And he'll give you the things at the appropriate time. <laughs> without sorrow. I say without sorrow. Uh, appropriate timing without sorrow. His timing doesn't come with sorrow. He knows when you are ready for everything. So he departed hence, hence and found Elisha, the son of Sephard. Who was plowing with twelve yokes of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now, I mean, you want God has sent you to a man of God, to a man that will succeed you, and all he does, you didn't even call him, you just hit him on the head with your mantle. Some of us say, ah, I'm Elijah, I mean of you. What is causing all this war? He just cast the mantle. Next verse. Verse 20. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. You hit me with your mantle and I'm also running after you. <laughs> and said, I pray thee. Let, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again. What have I to do with thee? What are you kissing people for? <laughs> what are you kissing goodbye? Go! Hmm. Do you think that the disciples that followed Jesus Christ, those 12 apostles, didn't have what they were doing? Do you think that they didn't have issues in their life? They had to follow Jesus. You think that this was where I was in 2009 with Jesus? I, I, there was none of you here. Just, just few people. You know how my day was? You know how every day was? 24 hours was? No more movement for the children. I beg you. Let's not be at the back there. You know how every 24 hours was? No more movement. You move out, you stay outside. 
because it destroys the Holy Spirit. And I won't take it. <laughs> I'm loyal first of all to the Holy Spirit, then we can talk later. We we'll fight, then later we'll settle. If at all we we'll settle. You know how 24 hours was for me? For throughout 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. You know what it means? It is the more you follow Jesus that your destiny unfolds before you. The more you follow him, if I had dropped in 2013, by now I would have been looking for where things are not. Trying to carve my life by my own mind. But right now I can see truly, I can see clearly where it's taking me. I may not see everything, but I, there's a road path. There were daily challenges of following Jesus and living what they were doing. Your old lifestyle your old way of living. There's a daily challenge and practical things that are involved. First Kings 17 verse 5. Is that somebody's phone? Okay, outside. I think the angels have to knock some demons tonight. I'm stressing too much. Verse 4, please. Verse 4. Verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah, saying, Let say, one to go, let's go. One to go. Again, unto him, saying, saying, okay, that was in verse 2. Now, next verse. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. Elijah, go to a brook. Go there. What are you to do there? Pray, fast and prayer. No, go and hide. Go and hide. Next verse. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Next verse. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherod, that is by Jordan. Next verse. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Next verse. And it came to pass that after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Next verse. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying. So from verse 2 to verse 8, God was quiet. He was just receiving the instructions from the bed for feeding day and night. What was he doing in the morning? We did not know. And later the word of the Lord came to him. Let me tell you, to be a man of God, you go to university, you cannot see. You can go through you University of Legon because at least there are curriculums, uh, there are issues. No, no, no. This one, the Holy Ghost, you just faith. You stay there in faith. The timing belongs to him in faith. It's university of the Spirit. When you graduate, when you enter exam, depend on the Spirit of God. You don't tell him where you want to live there. He got there by the word of the Lord to the brook. He left there by the word of the Lord. In between when he got the word and when he was released by the word, what was he doing? There were practical issues every day. <laughs> Maybe who would better for the message will be an internet listener. Thank God, I've got the message I'm looking for for years. Hmm. 
we have student that wants to graduate now before the Holy Ghost graduates them and yet you respect normal school curriculum university more than the Holy Spirit school because you can't see the syllabus <laughs> you don't have faith to see the syllabus Many of us have jumped out of class many times, repeated many times. Many people have left. I tell you, when they are ready to enter the university again, this ministry will come back. Maybe two years, ten years time. God will be waiting for them. Hallelujah. By the time God releases to your destiny, I tell you, you shall reign with him. He will use you. He will speak through you. I tell you of a truth that what you eat will never be a problem again. <laughs> what you will wear will never be a problem again. Before you say, I want, things are already in front of you. Amen. You go to the school. <laughs> mm. Because you see, there's a place in God that when you enter there, everything you move is like God. Nothing drops to the ground anymore. There are results whenever you move. It takes God to trust you to get in there. And that place is a place that unfolds as you move in God. Where any prayer you pray is the result. Any touch you lay hands is the result. <laughs> it's not for everybody. That place you don't waste prayer. Pa, you don't waste deliverance. Pa, one minute, gone. And that road, that road is a road we follow the master. And when he looks back, is he still following? Okay, he's still following. I will drop a little understanding for him today. Is he still following? He drops another understanding for you. He drops understanding as you go. Opens his word as you go. Many things we don't we, we can enter because we don't have the understanding of that door. Once you get the understanding, you will not move in error. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. This morning, a word woke me up, woke me up this morning. And that word... And I was pondering over that word for a long time. I was pondering over that word for a long time. I sat down in my toilet and I was just wow. <laughs> Who is listening to the Holy Spirit tonight? <laughs> I was wondering, wow. You woke up around early morning and the word of God hits you by that time and you're just sitting down, just wow. Acts 13 22. Wow. To God be the glory. I thank God for every man of God he has sent to this mission field in Ghana, all over the world. But we all have our place and our roles. And when he had removed him, he raised him up unto them 
David to be uh, unto them David to be their king to whom also he gave testimony he gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after my own heart we shall fulfill all my will I have found <laughs> that means it's not there it's guess I have found a man that desire what I desire a man that loves what I love a man that behaves the way I behave David saw the Goliath talking to the entire army of Israel for 40 days, 49 days the Goliath had been pointing hand at the armies of Israel and all the soldiers were shaking but David just came one day they deliver food and say what nonsense is happening here <laughs> a different kind of heart somebody that was not told that there was a need for him to do what he had to do someone that had seven brothers ahead of him three of them say you we know you are trying to become to come and look what you want to say to my father. The limitations of his elder brother did not stop him from solving a problem for Jehovah. Hey, they spoke to me anyhow. I'm leaving the church. You are, you are not ready. They took the assignment from me, so I'm leaving. You are not ready. David was a captain of different armies in Saul's army. And when Saul tried to kill him, even those things he was taking over, taking care of, was not his own problem. He just wanted to serve Saul. You remove me from the captain, no problem. You take this away from me, no problem. I just want to be alive. Don't kill me, Saul. I can dodge your javelin, but I will keep working for you. So if little things take you out of the journey, then you're not ready. <laughs> the only thing that made David escape was that Saul was just saying, I will destroy you now. And the son said, David, God has sent you away now. It is my voice. Go. As long as David was there, he said, for so I didn't move. Faithfulness. We'll end here. Let's go to Luke. And that Luke. Majesty, worship his majesty. Luke 23. Unto Jesus we enter. Majesty, kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own his untemperate so as lift up on high the name of Jesus come glorify Christ Jesus Luke 23:39 Worship his majesty Luke 23:39 Jesus who died is now glorified
Who wants to be a man of God in this place? Stand on your feet. Let me see. Don't put man, not woman yet. <laughs> ah, ah. Okay. You are a man of God. Now, look at your neighbor and say, can you pay the price? <laughs> Foxes have hole. The birds have their nest. But the son of man has nowhere to put his head. That means where we we'll sleep is not guaranteed. <laughs> uh, hmm. You see, you come to a nation and the nation knows a man has entered there. Oh. Do you know that when Saul was chasing David, when Saul chased David, David ran away. And David ran to Samuel, the man of God. Hey! Ran to Samuel. And David learned, and Saul learned that David has gone to Samuel's place and sent his servant to Samuel's place. And when his servant got to Samuel's place looking for David, the disciple was saying, they lost their motive. They sent another person again. They started prophesying. Saul's servants. And Saul said, let me even go myself. The Bible says he went there and prophesied day and night with his cloth open. A man of God enters an area and people that are in trouble hide there. <laughs> you think all what you have been running from that brought you here, somehow it went, it is the glory of God that kept you. Many of you have issues. Some are running from different things. But they came here and God killed it. And they forgot him. <laughs> now you enter a nation and trouble dies. Just like that. Jesus is now glorified. Now, why are the women of God standing on your feet too? Women of God standing on your feet. I want to be a woman of God. Now, you don't say that because you just heard me, heard me say it. There's a price. Catherine Kuhlman was a woman of God. There's a price. There's a price. You're not like normal women. You're not like normal women. What they do, you don't do them anymore. Your own is different. They don't understand you. <laughs> Jesus who died is now glorified. King. You see, big church, and they say, Where is the woman of the man of God? They point to you. That's the man of God sitting down there. That is the solution center that the Holy Ghost uses. Don't that mean anything to you? <laughs> the whole church appoints you. That's the woman there seated. And they can see the glory on you. Not your earrings. They can see the glory on you. Don't that mean anything to you? That means a lot to me. That God has chosen us to be vessels that He will use to change the world. That means the whole world to me. Now glorify. God bless you, Ben. I will sit down. So a song lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify. Christ Jesus. Majesty. Worship his man. Jesus will die.
now you can have a group of pastors plenty but one man of God that every of them know the pastors know this one is not like us this one is different you know that this one it's different we don't learn together what he learns is different from God And that is the grace in this ministry to produce such people. The issue is that will you go after Jesus Christ? Will you go after Jesus Christ? The young man at the end there, you see. A lot is fighting the ministry of God in your hands. Because there's a man of God sitting in there that has to be opened and unleashed. Sitting there. Nations, the whole country will be watching. You enter a service, they are afraid of God. You decide. And a man of God is not determined by the crowd he carries. It's the glory that follows him. Take him to the crusade ground. The same glory will go with him. Kill the place. Because Elijah could go to the brook and also deal with the 400 prophets of Baal. He can come down. He can go up. We must keep following the Lord Jesus. It is good to recite, Lord. Recite, you can recite it, Lord. Uh, come into my heart. I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe you died for my sins. But you see, I, I saw something different here. And one of the male factors which were hanged rail on him saying if thou be Christ save thyself and save us there were two things on the cross one said save us and save thyself next verse and the next verse please 40 but the other answering rebuked him saying hey does thou not fear God now this was a thief on his way to die a thief that was hung on the cross, blood gushing out, waiting to die, still fighting for Jesus Christ because he met him and saw him with a different kind of heart. Many of us, when we are in pain, we curse Jesus, we, we, we leave Jesus, we stop talking about Jesus. But this man was dying and said, You stop talking about Jesus that way. Don't you fear God? And when we have small problem, we just begin to, to murmur against God. But here comes a thief rebuking somebody at the, on the cross in his dying time. That's a great heart in there. Look at him, look at death. I had time to rebuke somebody talking nonsense about Jesus. When last did you rebuke anybody in your pain? Or did you stand for Jesus in your pain? Or you left Jesus and said, He has not forgotten me. And other people are What is wrong with you? This man was on his way to die. And he stood for Jesus Christ. And rebuked the other man. <laughs> and you think this man will not judge us? His standard not judge us on the last day. Any small pain, we begin to murmur. And we're not even dying yet. 
seeing that thou art in the same condemnation. Next verse, verse 41. And we indeed justify justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. Next verse. And he said unto Jesus Christ, Lord. <laughs> Instantly he came under his covering, Lord. <laughs> what a wise man. He never met him before. Instantly came under him and said, Lord. That means I accept you. He's not saying this. Okay, I believe I said I'm going. Oh, he just came in, Lord. He showed he was Lord because he stood for Jesus. At that five minutes he had with Jesus. It's not what you say, it's what you do. He called him Lord and he showed to the other man that he was Lord. He said, Stop what you are telling my Jesus Christ. He's my Lord now. Stop it. And his action came first before his words called him Lord Lord showed in his action man now we speak and we do nothing the actions of that man showed he was his Lord before his word came say Lord and Jesus had no doubt because of what the man did on his behalf we are now more talkers than doers Hey. That was an apostle right there on, on air. <laughs> Other apostles ran away. This one was on air. Fighting with the nails on his hands. Right there and right there. Next verse. He now said, Remember me. Right there and right there. He followed Jesus unto paradise. Remember me. I dare your back. In spirit. When you get there, I'm behind you. Remember me. That means I'm somewhere around. Okay, and you be that. Okay, come. Hmm. Let's clap for the Holy Ghost tonight. I just want one grateful disciple to clap for the Holy Spirit tonight. For the Holy Spirit. The pastor of the church, the apostle of the church. Hey! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. know Jesus Christ and does he know you it's not because I gave my life to Christ last year it means that you can enter that gate when the trumpet sounds are you close enough for him to know your name and know who you are, are you, do, you, do you talk to him do you know him let's bow down heads tonight I want us to just if you are here tonight you don't know Jesus you, 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 you've been going to church you, you, you read your Bible but you don't know the author of the book you are reading you don't know the one that wrote it you read the word of God but you don't know the one that wrote it you read the logos the writings but you don't know the one who wrote the power behind the book there are two different things you can call his name but you might not know him or you can claim you know him but he might not know you do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ a sincere relationship with him Do you stand for him? Do you, do you tell people that you know him? Or are you ashamed of him? Because that day he will be ashamed of you.
tonight you can start up a new relationship with Jesus Christ tonight you can start up something right now and if you are here you want to because you can come right now after I just drop the mic you can just come and that will be the end of the world for some of us who we'll just leave so you can sincerely commit to him tonight as a father I am sorry it is not by saying you know him look at what the thief did the thief stood for Jesus Christ are you standing for Jesus do people know our lives do people know that we are with him Let's just commit our ways to him and just say, Father, we are sorry. If you are here tonight, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You are sorry. You want to tell him, I want to know you. Those listening on the internet, if you are here tonight, you can just lift up your hand. Let me know you are there. It's nothing to be ashamed of at all. It's a journey into being a man and a woman of God. You can start that journey tonight with Jesus Christ. You can begin to follow him. You have not been following him. Because when you follow him, you can't tell lies. When you follow him, you can't fornicate. When you follow him, you can't do certain things. Because he's at close range. I was speaking to somebody. Someone said to me, whenever you travel, we know God is around. But we know something that is to watch us has not, is not around. So we misbehave when you're not around. You cannot behave or misbehave when the Holy Spirit is very close by you. If Jesus is very close to you, you can't misbehave. How close are you to him determines how well you can behave. Or is it a long distance relationship? You call him when you need him or when you feel like it? Create in me a new heart. The heart that David had. David saw Goliath with a different eye from the other armies of Israel. Create in me a new heart. Oh. If you are here tonight, you want to give your life to Christ, just commit yourself tonight and say, Today I begin to live for Jesus Christ. I begin to stand for Jesus Christ. I will show him by my actions that he is now my Lord. The things I used to do, I will turn my back from those things. These things he does not like, I will stop doing them. I, I release my life to him now as my Lord and my Savior. Just like the thief on the cross, I will stand for Jesus. I will openly declare him as Lord before everyone. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Like you forgive Zacchaeus instantly, you came to his house. Jesus, have mercy upon me. Wash me. You are the Son of God. You are my Lord. And you died for my sin. I believe it, Lord. I believe it. Write my name in the book of the Remember me when you get to your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. And when he had, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. These two in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when you are sub saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you as 